you and Magic, I know you have had a long-standing career with Magic Johnson over the years. Do you go from working with Magic Johnson directly to working with Puff? Or do you have another client somewhere in the middle of that? I know I go directly. Um, again, another, uh, another blessed but crazy story is that um, and me and Magic were, were having a disagreement um, at that time. And I, I, was, I went and had a meeting at an agency that at the time felt like too many uh, of these new management companies were popping up and taking their business away um, by like now the management company has a booking department, has a things that agents did. So I was meeting with them about starting a management arm of an agency. Um, and Puff was coming from the, a meeting with the, the chairman of the agency. <laughs> And we met uh, uh, again that day, uh, you know, having had the relationship of Howard, Dougie Fresh, and all of those types of things and the success that I was having with Magic. Um, and we had a conversation uh, right then and on the, on the, on the uh, cusp. And again, the Lord uh, blessed because it couldn't happen no other way. And two days later, I was Puff manager. Are you serious? That that ass. He was moving to LA, and at the time, Magic was the king of LA. So me and Norma were immediately. I mean, we we knew each other from the Andre Harrell days and things like that. But we were immediately, two days later, looking for a house for Puff to uh, get in 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 Beverly Hills. Okay, I once heard Puff mention that you were the best manager he's ever had. And what is it that you think that a manager of people need to bring to the table? Because Puff is, you know, I've worked with Puff for 20 plus years of my life. He's different. He's A-list, he's demanding, he's all of the things that you would expect someone of his caliber to be. But you not only kept up with him, you were able to bring deals to the table and I watched him trust you. And Puff doesn't trust a lot of people. He would literally be in meetings, do what Puff does, hand it to my manager, Phil. He can take it from here. And he had the confidence that you could bring it home. Can you give me some traits that anybody who is not just a manager of talent, but a manager of people, if they work at a regular corporation and they're heading a team, what are some great traits that they need to have to win the confidence of their superiors? Well, um, what comes to mind now um, are two things. So, um, I'm sure many people have now um, saw the Black Godfather, Clarence Avon. And I met him also uh, early on uh, with my magic uh, job and um, with uh, one of my other uh, bosses to be after Puff, L.A. Reed. And I, I was with Clarence one time and I remember him saying like, you go into the room or as uh, Mr. Robinson or, you know, LA's guy, but you leave the room as Phil. Very important. I don't care who takes you into a room, make sure that by time you leave the room, you've established some relationship with somebody important in that room to, uh, to remember you by in a good way to, to, you know, glean something out of, not just glean something out of me and, but make sure they know who you are by time you leave. So I apply that a lot. Um, but also um, with Puff, what, what we built up was, like you said, trust. Um, I don't, growing up as the church kid that my grandmother raised, I don't, drunk, I, I just never had the taste for drinking. Um, I didn't smoke or uh, do drugs or any of that type of stuff. And by now, I, I was having more success than I could have ever imagined. So I had no reason to take anything. 
me and Puff had a, a definitely a give and take relationship. And I believe uh, to this day, if, if he needed me, you know, he knows that I, um, I would be there. Um, and he used to tell me all the time, like if something happened to me, like he said it on national TV one day, this is the guy I would want to take care of my children. So I always try to keep that uh, relationship with him. And, but he also, as he began to trust me more and began to enjoy the relationship that uh, I was delivering as a manager, he would, you know, impart things in me. Uh, like, you know, like, now nah, do it like this, playboy. Or, you know, like, uh, or tell me in advance, like he might go in and play bad cop and, you know, I need to play good cop and clean it up. So we, the, we, we, we built a real trust and uh, it's important to never deviate from that. Like if you go into something and you faking or you acting or whatever the case may be, at some point you're not going to remember uh, what you uh, were acting and what you know really took place and you're gonna get jammed up. Um, so uh, Puff, and you know, he's that type of dude, he's gonna test you on a regular basis. So I always um, tried to be prepared ahead of time for whatever it would be. And then I was talking to uh, Rocio uh, a couple of months ago or whatever, and something had hit me like, you know, people are always telling you in these like seminars and in these this and that, like, you know, the best and most important thing, man, is know who you are, know what you gonna do, know this, know that, you know? But it, it hit me and I, I told her like, you know what's been one of the most important things that have been a uh, part of my success, our success? Know who you're not. Bingo. I have drilled that message home to my audience again and again and again. So happy you brought that up, but go ahead. And so in the Puff relationship, um, I knew who I wasn't. So I made sure to identify and tap people um, that knew how to be that person that he wanted or that he needed in his life. And I also identified uh, great and strong relationships from um, the people that were uh, already around him that you needed to have a, a team to, to make it work. It was never always about me. I don't care if I don't get the credit ever. Just spell my name right uh, when you do that wire. It was always important to me. So in those days, I wouldn't have been able to do it without a Norma, a Tracy, or you, a Derek, you know, like Jamil. All of those people had different roles to make the Puff Machine move. Jeff Tweedy. Um, you know, it was uh, me and Norma that realized that, you know, Puff want to touch everything. So rather than us letting him dictate to us when, what he's going to touch, Let's kind of put a, 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 a puff Bible together. So if, if we got five people around him and these are the things you're responsible for, right? So because puff will ask three different people, he'll get me a can of Coke to put on, you know, he puts it on his eye uh, to get when he got a brain freeze or a headache, but he'll ask three people. So you've got three people running around trying to find a, can, a cold can of Coke or beverage or whatever for him where we, assign one person this is what you're in charge of so if he asks any other other four for a can of coke you tell the person that's responsible and i know what they're doing if he asks for something about his kid's school or whatever this person is responsible for that so again everybody reports into this person for that so we began to organize the system ourselves and the biggest most important thing was um with Puff, you had to learn how to create things outside of uh, the, the norm as far as his time, you know, because Puff is going 72 hours a day before he need a rest. Um, so it had to be, OK, what we're going to do is say this time is for Jeff Tweedy and Sean John, where he can, you know, get with Dawi and approve this or get with, you know, the market and people to go do that. So we would set his time where. All of those things came to him and they had their time to do it so that the, his time was better used than driving all over the city, stopping at Sean John, stopping at this place. Stop, you know, we, we kind of brought it all under two rules. Both back then it was uh, the bad boy offices and daddy's house. We tried to coordinate everything between those two places. 
So again, it was recognizing who I was not because I couldn't be all of those things at one time. But it also gave him the opportunity to identify in me that I was learning from him. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.